In this video, we're going to quickly review how to draw marginal production, total production, and average production. This is just sketching, but that's often how we want to do it in an economics course. We're going to start with marginal production. Marginal production, remember, is governed by the law of eventually diminishing marginal returns. So we see marginal production first increase and then begin to decrease and it will eventually become negative. Keep in mind that we don't start marginal production at the origin because we're saying what is the additional production by adding one input. So you can't have any additional production when your output is zero. So it's, it doesn't go on the diagram. We're going to look at total production next. Total production, remember, correlates, one part of it correlates to the top part of marginal production here, and another part correlates to where marginal production intersects the x-axis or where it becomes zero. So total production does start at the origin because it is possible for a company to exist and have zero inputs and zero outputs. That's possible. For example, you could have a factory with no machines or people, therefore no production would occur. Total production will rise as marginal production rises, and it will rise at an increasing rate. So we draw it with a steepening curve. Until we get to the point, uh, to the top point of marginal production, and from this point we see still total product will increase, but at a lower and lower rate until it gets to the quantity at which marginal production is zero, and at that point, we're going to see that total production begins to fall. So there's correlation here to there, where to total production becomes negative, and the top point of marginal production correlates to this inflection point where the curve becomes less and less steep. Average production, likewise, starts at this position here, because you can't have any average production if your output and inputs are both zero. And it's going to go up along with marginal production, but it's going to continue to go up past the point, uh, the highest point of marginal production. The reason for that is that even though marginal production is falling, it's still higher than what average was. Therefore, we're adding a higher number to the average, and the average is going to go up. This continues to happen until marginal production intersects average production. And from this point forward, marginal production is less than average production. So average production is going to fall. So then this line is our average product. So where do we see the law of eventually diminishing marginal returns in each of these three curves? Well, it's easy to see here in marginal production. Obviously, it's where marginal production becomes negative. But what about in total production? Well, you could point to the inflection point because from this point, our gains are not as good as they were. And certainly, once our gains are negative, losses, then certainly we've gone past the point of diminishing marginal returns. In average production, it's a little bit different because again, what we see is that even though our marginal production is falling, the law of diminishing marginal returns doesn't actually affect average production until this point here. And this point here is actually what we refer to as productive efficiency. It's the point at which we're, produ we're producing at the most efficient rate.